What's going on guys, this is Burrs. I have a video here for you today showing you how to paint a Glock slide. Now there's only a few steps you have to take to paint your Glock slide, and everything's rather simple. Attention to detail is really a must here. Uh, you know, you do those few things, you're gonna be pretty golden with painting your Glock slide. So what I have here in front of you is one slide that I recently painted, which is right here, and I use a Lumahide for that. Can I go over that and show you what that looks like? And then the other one over here is one I haven't uh, painted. So I'm gonna use this as an example as far as breaking it down, showing you what you have to paint. But before we get started, we'll go ahead, take a look in the chambers, and as you can see, there's nothing in there. And uh, let's get started. So as far as breaking down the slide, it's rather easy on a Glock. If you've cleaned one, you know exactly how to break down a slide. Uh, you wanna rack the action, safe direction with no, nothing inside the gun. Go ahead and pull a trigger, pull back on it, pull down on those um, little knobs right there on either side. And then as you can see, the slide is off now. So we can put this over to the side because you're not gonna need that yet. So this is one that I recently painted, as I said, you can see I left the inside untouched. Uh, Lumahide is a rather thick coat. Um, if you use something like Cerakote or if you send off your slide to get Cerakoted, um, they're probably gonna paint the whole gun because it's such a thin coating. But Lumahide is rather uh, thick. You can see actually during painting, I actually chipped this part off of the, uh, the paint when I was uh, moving it around, so I gotta go retouch that up. But as you can see, you know, as long as you pay attention to some details, you're gonna get a real nice finish on your slide. This one right here is actually one I'm doing a video series on as far as uh, modifications I'm doing to uh, this Glock. As you can see, I have a KKM precision barrel in here, which is uh, titanium, titanium, titanium nitrate coated by a titanium gun and I'll put a link down to where you can uh, find these barrels at. So let's get started and I'll get the other gun here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this gun as the example, this other one here. And as far as breaking down a slide, it's rather easy. I actually just shot a video on how to break down your slide for cleaning, um, which you can use for this because you have to take all the parts out. But first things first, you wanna take the recoil spring out. You wanna take the barrel out. And that leaves your slide pretty much broken down as far as field stripped, but you're gonna to have to take all the rest of the parts out, which is very easy. Uh, you wanna make sure to take your striker out, the uh, extractor, um, the base, or the, the back plate here. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. It's rather easy. The only thing that you need to do is depress this portion in here. I'm gonna to point to it here. There's like a little cup in this area right here. You wanna depress that down while pu pulling the, uh, the back plate off. And you want to make sure to keep your finger over top of the back plate because there's some spring spring pressure on the striker um, and the plunger for the extractor. So you want to go ahead and push down on that while you pull off the back of the slide. Pull it off. You can hear it snap because the spring pressure on here. And then you can go ahead and take this and put this off to the side. Now you can go ahead and break down the rest of the slide. You can take your striker out or firing pin as some would call it. You can take the plunger out for the extractor. To get the extractor out, it's super uh, easy. The, there's like a little button right here as far as layman's terms. You use gravity as your friend, point the extractor down and push that button. Rather easy, extractor comes right out and then uh, that'll come right out as well. So now you actually have a fully broken down slide that you can prepare for painting. Now at this point is where you're gonna to wanna to degrease this rather well. The outside surface where you're going to paint, I would take acetone, go ahead and go over that and make sure there's nothing sticky. I use some skateboard tape here for one-handed manipulations. Um, on this slide, I took that off and then took acetone over that. But using acetone on the outside um, is something you're gonna to wanna to do. And we'll get to the outside a little bit later. But as far as the inside goes, I would go ahead, take some isopropyl alcohol. Now this is 91%, you can use 91% or higher. Go ahead and clear uh, everything and just get it all nice and degreased without alcohol on the inside here because you want your paint to, uh, to stick to uh, the inside of the gun uh, as far as your painter's tape that you're gonna use. Now like I said on this slide, and the way that I'm showing it today, is just ra basic spray paint. Um, or if you just don't want the surface on the inside painted, um, that's the way I'm gonna show you today. If you, you want to bump the camera like a professional, <laughs> if you uh, if it doesn't bother you, you're using a, a lighter weight uh, paint, because Alumahide is rather thick and you have like Krylon and stuff. If um, you're using like Cerakote, you can just give this off to someone, or if you're you know, someone who's gonna try to do the Cerakote by yourself, it probably wouldn't hurt to uh, you know just spray down the whole thing because it's such a thin coating. So go ahead, take the isopropyl alcohol, 
go over the inside like I said, and then what you're gonna wanna do is tape it off. Now there's lots of uh, tape out there. I've actually found this tape to be kind of horrible. It's HDX, I forget if it's Home Depot or Lowe's, but this stuff doesn't work very well. Uh, what I have found is that this Scotch 3M stuff, it's like a tan color. This works rather well. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is put this all over the bottom portion of your slide. And the easiest way to do that is kind of put this in the grooves. And the reason, the other reason why I don't like painting the inside is because I want the action to work very well. So I just put this off to the side like this, put that in there. That way it's not, you're not getting the paint into the, uh, the slide rails. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that for everything. And then on the front here, I'll take the paint, uh, the paint, I'll take the tape, put it around on the inside here, leave a little bit of an edge. And then on the back here, I'll get these little, if you take the back plate here and put this back on, I'll go ahead and put it down these little grooves right here so there's no paint that gets into the inside um, or your striker uh, channel as well. The other thing that I do is I take some tape and the areas where I don't mind paint getting is like up in the top here. So I'll put some tape right here if you put it on properly, but you get the point. I don't mind this being exposed and this being exposed with some paint, but you definitely don't want it down here in the uh, striker uh, area, and you don't want to have it in the ejection uh, holes in, see if I can get a better shot here. On the inside there are the holes where the um, ejector sits and everything in relation to it. So I will, so I will take some uh, tape here, I'll break down the, the tape, and I'll go into this area right here and put the, uh, the tape like that and keep it out of that area. And then what I'll do is I'll take some tape and put it on the back here so that the ejector channel doesn't get filled up with paint as well. A finished product should look something like the picture that's on the screen now. Uh, I'm not gonna go through it for this one because I'm not painting this one. So that's the basics is what you wanna do. You just wanna make sure that you don't get anything on the inside, like I said, and you don't get anything in the channels. So as long as you you know plug those up, uh, you'll be rather good. What I do is I'll take a piece of rope. You could take um, one of the inner strands of paracord, wrap it around where the recoil spring goes in this uh, hole right here, and hold, you know, uh, have it up there and if you're gonna paint outside put it on you know something that's up higher and then just twirl it around and go ahead and spray it down the other thing I recommend because I have some nice um, high knee sights these are straight eight sights on this Glock so I went ahead and taped those off as well and to get really precise you want to make sure that uh, the tape sticks rather well so you just go ahead and you know, go around the outside like that and uh, just make sure that you know, everything's nice and precise if that's what you're looking for. You definitely don't want to paint your very expensive straight eight sights or any other sights you have. So make sure that you tape those off as well. So then what you want to do is take some uh, sandpaper, something around a 320 grit mark. You just want to lightly kind of go over the outside of the slide here. You don't want to get it down to the bare uh, metal everywhere, but if you just take a little bit of sandpaper and go over the outside a little bit, just to give it scuffed so that the paint that you're going to be putting onto the slide has something to uh, attach itself to and grab. Um, that's the only reason you're going to do that. Then you want to take some acetone, go over the outside uh, as a finish, um, you know, wipe down of the uh, slide, and then you're ready for painting. So when you go outside or you're in your garage or wherever you're going to do this, definitely don't do it indoors. Don't recommend that. But you want to be in a well-ventilated area. You want to have this up and then you want to go over the uh, the slide with very light coats. You want to have multiple light coats. You don't want to have one large coat because it's going to chip off easier. Um, it's also going to take a lot longer to dry. So prior to your first coat, what you want to do is actually put your uh, slide into the oven. Toaster oven works great. Um, you know, in this example, the pictures I have here, i um, using a toaster oven. So 150 degrees for five to 10 minutes is what you're going to want to do prior to your first coat. And the reason you're doing that is because you're opening up the pores of the metal. So when you take it outside and put the first coat on, uh, the, it's gonna penetrate slightly to a degree into the metal um, and with your first coat, then you're gonna bring it back inside after your first coat um, and put it back in the oven. But the first coat you put on here, you wanna have it extremely light. So you wanna have, see speckles of the color, but you don't wanna actually see the color that you're painting it. And that's really what this comes down to is just a continual you know, spraying it with a real light coat, bringing it in, put it in the oven at 150 for five to 10 minutes, go put another coat on, bring it back out, or bring it back in, and in and out, in and out of the oven. Um, and the reason that you're doing the oven, like I said, is you're, you're baking that, that uh, onto there. So if you do air drying, it's gonna take forever. 
But like I said, the other reason that you're doing it is because the metal is going to, the pores of the metal is going to expand a little bit and you're going to be able to kind of get a much deeper paint job than you would if you just go right on the outside of the, um, the bare metal without having it heated up a little bit. So once you're done with that, you go ahead and let it sit there for about an hour or two. Once you get done with your last coat, it's probably going to be around your sixth coat that you're going to, six or seven coat that you're going to feel comfortable with the paint job you have. So after that, you just let it sit there for about an hour or two. Go ahead, take off the, uh, the tape then. And I still wouldn't use it for a few days, just to allow it to cure a little bit on its own. Uh, but after that, you're gonna have a really good paint job. Um, like I said, here's an example of the one I did recently, about a week ago. You can see that you know, everything's real nice. There's nothing, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, minus my own mistake right here with chipping it once I uh, took it out of the oven for the last time, I just haven't retouched it up. But you can see that everything's nice and, you know, it, it's nice and even. There's no blotchiness, there's no heaviness to the, it looks like a factory finish um, if you were to have one right from Glock if they uh, provided such a thing. So, you know, if you're looking to paint your Glock slide, it's real easy. Uh, it might seem uh, rather intensive, but you know, to get that finished product, you gotta take the time to, um, you know, do everything that you can you know, do your job in painting the slide so that you get that great finished product that's gonna last a while. When you have, you know, once you, once you paint your slide or you even Cerakote it, it's gonna wear off over time. It doesn't matter what coating it is. So I wouldn't worry too much about the coating coming off because you're gonna have to retouch it up, whether it's Cerakote or if it's a Lumahide or if it's Krylon, it's gonna wear off over time. The only difference between like um, Krylon and Rust-Oleum and a Lumahide is, Lumahide is gonna last a little bit longer with the coating you put on it. And the only difference between a Lumahide and Cerakote is a Cerakote is going to last a little bit longer than a Lumahide. But ultimately, over the course of time, uh, if you're someone who's used firearms, you know, especially with a Glock slide with holstering, um, you know, it's going to wear off uh, over time. So it's definitely going to be a process you're going to have to go through a few times over the lifetime of the gun. But uh, for me, it definitely gives it a cool look and it definitely, you know, blends in a lot better than having a black slide. Unless you're into that kind of thing, and I guess you don't have to worry about it at all. But if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and let me know. If you guys uh, have painted your slides or whatever, go ahead and put in the comments down below with your techniques and uh, what your outcomes have been. Or better yet, make a video about it so we all can take a look at it. And until next time, later.